Gurupyo Namaha. Namaste to one and all present. I'm very honored to be a part of this esteemed panel of speakers. And all thanks to the Office of International Relations and Higher Studies, SRM University, Andhra Pradesh, for inviting me to be a guest as part of this virtual launch of an initiative as unique as Adigyan. A great person once quoted, India, with all her infinite charm and variety, began to grow upon me more and more. And yet, the more I saw of her, the more I realized how very difficult it was for me or for anyone else to grasp the ideas she had embodied. Because it was not her wide spaces that eluded me or even her diversity, but some depth of soul which I could not fathom. I, I found this quote to be very apt for this gathering because the very intention of Adityan is to spread the glory of India far and wide. And there are many facets, I feel, which add to its charm, one of it significantly being the dance forms. Today, I'm very happy to be speaking about a topic that I am personally very passionate about, Indian dance forms. And what is it that makes them so special? Now, as we all know, India in India, Vedas are considered to be the primordial source of knowledge. And it is believed that everything else emanated from the four Vedas. Now, as per the origin of Indian dance, it is considered to be the fifth Veda, also known as the Natya Veda. And as per the legend, the golden age of Krita Yuga passed peacefully. And thereafter came the silver age of Treta Yuga. That is when the trouble started. There was a deterioration in the nature and character of people who succumbed to increased sensual pleasures, lust, greed, jealousy, and dishonesty. And this led to chaos and misery everywhere. It is then that Lord Indra and other devas approached Lord Brahma and requested him to save mankind by creating something that is pleasing to the eyes, melodious for the ears, thoughtful for the mind, and soothing for the soul. Something that could be easily enjoyed by one and all, irrespective of caste and creed. In the words of Sri Radesham Dasji, who just spoke so beautifully, something which can transform the heart and soul. As a response, Lord Brahma created the Natya Veda as a culminated essence of all the four Vedas by taking the Patyam on lyrics from Rig Veda, Gitam or music from Samaveda, Abhinaya or expressions from Yajur Veda, and Rasas or sentiments from the Atharvana Veda. And upon creation of the Natya Veda, Lord Brahma handed over the responsibility of its propagation to Bharata Muni and his disciples. Now from this story, we understand how important dance is to the fabric of India because it encompasses the fourfold purpose of life, dharma, righteousness, artha, prosperity, Kama, the desires, and moksha, the salvation. We can be very proud of the fact that India is the only country to have eight classical dance forms, apart from several other indigenous and folk forms, as my friend Radhe Jaggi was also mentioning. Dance has been mentioned and glorified in all the great literary works of India that have followed the Vedas be it in the Upanishads, the Sutras, the Epics, the Shastras, or even the Kavyas. In the Grihya Sutras, it is clearly stated that the arts of music and dancing played an important role in every stage of domestic life, including birth ceremonies, Upanayana or threading ceremony, 
marriages, simantana, or even the death ceremony. Here I have to mention the epic Ramayana, in which dancing is considered to be a Gandharva Vidya and was a significant part of the Gurukula training system. Dancing was taught to princes and princesses alike right from a tender age. And our very first picture of Ayodhya as a city full of prosperity, peace and satisfaction is a picture where the entertainments like music and dance were in full bloom because these marked an essential sign of a prosperous dynasty. In fact, we read that both Lord Rama as well as Ravana were proficient in the art of dancing. There are numerous descriptions of dancing mentioned in the epic Mahabharata as well, because by then, the retinue of Indra's Apsaras had considerably incre increased and they had also descended upon earth to earlier to tempt and be friendly with man. In fact, Arjuna's disguise as Brahannana in the Virata Parva is quite popular. Not just that, Indian dancing has been strongly associated with most of the Hindu deities, including Lord Shiva or Nataraja, who is considered to be the Lord of Dance, Lord Krishna, Ganesha, Subramanya, and the varied forms of Mother Goddess, be it Parvati, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and many more. We also see that the dance postures were sculpted on the walls and pillars of several prominent temples, including the Brihadishwara Temple in Tanjore, temples in Hampi, Beluru, Halebido of Karnataka, the Kajuraho Temple, and several others spanning the length and breadth of India. These were also promoted significantly by several rulers and the dynasties including the Cholas, the Pandavas, the Pallavas, as well as the Vijayanagara dynasty. Now here, it brings us, I feel, to a very important question. What is it about Indian dance that makes it so significant and widespread? And why is it important for us to embrace it? I feel Indian dance forms aid in the all-round development of an individual because it goes beyond the realm of physicality and it indulges one's thoughts, emotions, and psyche as well. Dance truly acts as a stress buster by helping release toxins from the body and also activating the brain cells simultaneously. It helps in the release of endorphins, also known as the happy hormones, thereby resulting in a very positive feeling at the end of it. As most of you might know, communication is the soul of Indian dance forms. And in the process of portraying various characters from different uh, mythologies, or it can be epics, a dance practitioner not only learns about the rich and the unique tales of India, and we also get connected to the culture of our land in a, in a very significant manner, but it also helps us in developing a flexibility of body and mind which is of utmost importance in the process of maybe when I, for example, when I played the role of Hanuman in one of our productions, Chitra Lohita, where Hanuman opens his heart to show his devotion to Sri Rama, it re, I, of course, I knew the importance of bhakti even before that. But by dancing that episode, the transformation that happened in me and the way I could connect to bhakti as a concept was so much more stronger. And as again, Radhesham Dasti said, it's very important for us to inculcate values, character, a sense of humility. And I think this episode as I danced helped me improve on my humility towards everything around me, not just on stage. Dance also makes a person more expressive and aids in better communication, which is of utmost importance in our day-to-day -day life. You know, there are many who enroll for personality development sessions to improve on communication skills, confidence, concentration, uh, grasping power, and focus. 
But how about jo joining a dance class instead? Because it single-handedly caters to all of these concerns and more. It is also scientifically proven that dancing improves blood circulation, body-mind coordination, and helps in multitasking abilities. From my personal experience, I can vouch that dancing has helped me a great deal in education as well. You know, when I was pursuing my computer science engineering, more often than not, there would be dance performances just before my internals or my final exams. And while my friends would be focusing on studies, there I was preparing for dance performances. Of course, a lot of um, prior planning went into managing the situation. But I must say that post a performance, I would feel so rejuvenated that made my studying and uh, the experience of preparing for an exam much more faster, efficient, and enjoyable. Now, Indian dances are also used for therapeutic purposes because they help a great deal in healing. In an age where mental health is becoming a concern, I can see that the significance of dancing is only increasing. I vividly remember this one young girl several years ago who walked into our dance institution with her parents. Uh, she was affected with Down syndrome and her parents wanted to enroll her for dance classes because it was advised by the doctors themselves. In the initial 10 minutes that I met her, it was evident that she was going through a lot of mood swings and she was very reluctant to even look into or talk to people around her. But I was pleasantly surprised to see how a month of dancing under the guidance of my mother and Guru Shrimati Vaijanti Kashi changed her attitude for good. I feel dance had a calming effect on her mind and it made her feel more relaxed. And I think a sense of accomplishment engulfed her after every dance class, which eventually increased her self-confidence. Though dancing might not completely heal a syndrome, I feel that it certainly eases out and improves the coping mechanism. And one of the other factors which I feel makes Indian dancing so special is its universality. It reaches out to people in an unbiased fashion, irrespective of nationality, aesthetic preferences, language, caste, creed, and whatnot. Uh, here I would like to quote one episode which I personally experienced. We were once sent to Tanzania and Uganda by the Indian Council of Cultural Relations for performances. And as part of the performance, we had planned to present a piece on Kubja, who is a hunchback woman, uh, and she was a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Initially, we were very uh, skeptical if people could relate to this piece because the language used as well as the story itself was completely alien uh, for the African audience. But the response that we received was so overwhelming. There were many who came backstage to see us filled with tears post the performance. And I can never forget that uh, moment because for me personally, it reiterated the strength, the depth, the power, the magic, and the universality of Indian dance forms. Now, many a times, uh, we often even question the relevance of Indian dance forms. There is also a misnomer amongst the younger generation that Indian dance is only meant for older people and maybe only for the feminine gen gender. And as my friend Radhi said, maybe they feel it's not, it's beyond their reach. However, we should understand that Indian dance is very much gender neutral. And it's like a river that has constantly been flowing through generations, enriching civilizations with culture and values. Indian dance has an innate ability of interpretations and reinterpretations, making it vibe with the rhythm of every generation that comes up and making it also suitable for all age groups, be it a child, 
a teenager, a middle-aged person, or even a senior or an elderly person. For those who seek entertainment, for those who seek education, or even spiritual inclination and growth, Indian dance has the power to give you what you seek from it. And it also caters to varied themes, including mythological, historical, social, political subjects. All of these and more can be creatively and intelligently put forth to the medium of Indian dance. And we should be aware that our Indian dance forms are very much a living tradition, which is why it has remained relevant not just in the past, but also in the present and will remain so in future as well. It is interesting to note how Indian dance has become an active part of Indian education system these days. And there are several platforms for dancers to showcase their art today and to embrace it as a full-time profession. Indian dance is also a symbol of peace and harmony, upholding the message of Vasudaiva Kutumbaka. The world is one family, which a message which is very important for us to rethink on, especially in the present situation and times. They say, deeper the roots, bigger the tree. And for us as humans to transform and become much more efficient it is important, firstly, to connect to ourselves through emotions and very important to be constantly connected to the values of our land because it's truly special. I wish that we can immerse ourselves much better in the glory of India and its values through the various initiatives of Adigyan, which I'm sure will certainly enrich us and result in an increased efficiency in our parallel pursuits. Thank you.